as Joel mentioned, grass is generally recognized as safe. This is what came about from um, the passage in 1958 of the Food Additive Amendment. It contains the grass exemption. It What that means is that if something is considered grass, it doesn't have to go through FDA approval. It can actually be um, deemed safe by a quote unquote expert. And then the company can start adding that chemical to the food supply. And they don't even have to notify the FDA that they're putting this chemical in the food supply. And there's roughly 10,000 food um, additives in, uh, you know, chemical additives in the food supply. So roughly 10,000 chemical additives in the food supply. And it's estimated the majority of these, especially in the last decade or so, got on the market by this grass loophole, okay? This grass exemption has become a loophole. So there's thousands upon thousands of chemicals now in our food supply that the FDA may not even know exist, okay? So, so, so Sina, just, just so we don't run ahead of anybody here, uh, throw out one, for example, monosodium glutamate, MSG, would that be considered grass? Yes. So it's a perfect example. Monosodium glutamate is grass. And the, the thing about it is that in studies, we know that monosodium glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that can damage and actually kill cells, including brain cells. And of course, I, I'm not being, I'm not an alarmist, right? I'm not saying that if you eat Doritos that has monosodium glutamate, you're going to keel over from, you know, the toxic consequence to the nervous system. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that these chemicals are put in the food supply often without any um, toxicity testing or real safety testing. And there's certainly not long-term safety testing done. And there's certainly not testing done on when you combine these chemicals together in the food. Nobody looks at that. And one reason is because we don't even know what chemicals are out there because the process is voluntary to notify the FDA and the people. So yeah, I'm not we, being- yeah, if, if, we just take, if we just take MSG, just as an example, um, in 1940, Americans consumed 1 million pounds of MSG in 19, and the whole, in the whole country consumed 1 million pounds of MSG today, Cena today, America consumes 300 million pounds of MSG. That's mm. all. That's about, that's almost a pound per person in mm. the U S on average in a year. That's wow. a lot. That's a lot of chemical. And, uh, and and it it doesn't go through any testing because it's generally recognized as safe, and so it can be put in any food product, anything you want, just uh, put it in, and, and and so so like you said, they don't test. You know, once it's grass, they they don't test for the difference between ingesting a tenth of an ounce per year versus fourteen ounces a year. That's not. It, it doesn't even hit the radar. Yeah, no one's looking at these things. And, you know, it would be really hard even to, to be able to isolate it because there's so many different compounds that people are consuming. So the legal issue, right, um, if somebody going and suing a company for putting one chemical in the food that they think damaged them physically, um, that's a hard case to prove because we're yeah. in a toxic soup of chemicals, you know? So the onus on the company to uh, explore more safety testing is not very high. And in fact, this is what the um, what the FDA has said. So, so, so let me not jump too far ahead. Let me bring you along with my train of thought here. Okay, so, so if, you, if you talk to the Government Accountability Office, um, they will say that when it comes to grass, Congress actually messed up because when the food additive amendment was passed and the grass exemption was in that amendment, Congress didn't declare who's responsible for determining if substances are grass or not. Okay. So in that leadership vacuum, the food manufacturers started to determine whether an ingredient or a substance that was added to the food is grass. And the way they do that is they hire some experts. So they get some expert to, to basically declare it grass. And there's studies that have been published that show that these experts, by and large, have ties to the companies, right? Ties to industry. 
So once they de declare that it's grass, it goes directly to the into the food. And I said, that's voluntary. But here's the kicker. The FDA is the one that made that process voluntary. Okay. Which sounds crazy, <laughs> right? Because now you have the FDA saying, oh, now we're going to do like, we're going to have more post-market assessments of these chemicals, even though they declared it regular, uh, they declared it voluntary for the companies to even tell them if the company was where they, if the chemicals are in there. And if you look at the FDA's policy on grass, they have voluntary non-binding recommendations for industry. And that's in quotes. These are non-binding recommendations where the FDA actually says, quote, it is your responsibility to ensure that substances added to the foods you manufacture or distribute comply with all applicable regulatory requirements for substances added to food. Okay. That is the FDA's policy on grass. So my point is this, I, I'm not sure what's going to change here. Like, even if I was a person who wanted the FDA to get involved, which I'm not, but let's say I was like, yay, the FDA now is doing this huge reorg and they're changing all these things. And now they're going to do all these assessments. Okay. So, so what am I thinking, Joel, if, if I'm a person who's doesn't do all these deep dives, but I see these headlines saying, sure. oh, largest reorg in history. And now they're doing post-market assessments and they're cracking down on mm -hmm. the chemicals that are in our food. Do you think I'm going to feel relieved? I'm going to be like, yes, my food's safer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the, the entire, the entire uh, um, whatever, persona of the press releases, uh, the whole thrust of the press releases is, man, we're, we're going to get tough. We're going to get tough. And so, so everybody, so, so it, it just, um, it just, uh, uh, you know, posturing, posturing before the peasants to send the peasants into further drowsiness. Another grass chemical was brominated vegetable oil. Okay. BVO, brominated vegetable oil. This was in Mountain Dew, for instance, it's still in over 600 products sold in the United States. And that's according to the USDA, okay? It has been removed from Mountain Dew more recently, but again, it's still in 600 products sold in the United States. Okay, brominated vegetable oil is a patented flame retardant for plastics. It was banned in Japan. It was banned in India. It has been banned in the United Kingdom since 1970. It's been banned in the European Union since 2008. But in the U.S., brominated vegetable oil has been in our food supply since the 1920s. And it actually wasn't until this year that the FDA actually banned BVO, brominated vegetable oil, from our food supply. The FDA released a statement this year saying that BVO is, um, is no longer considered safe as a result of studies that were done in collaboration with the NIH or the National Health Institute. And they did find potential for adverse health effects in humans. So what they find? They found that it could damage the thyroid gland leading to hypothyroidism, weight gain, and depression. Well, Joel, how many people do we know that have issues with thyroid problems, issues with weight, and that are depressed, right? And I'm not saying it's directly from BVO, but you can't overlook this when now finally, after decades and decades of consumption and other countries banning this, this compound on scientifically sound evidence, now the FDA is finally saying, oh, we think it could cause these issues, so let's stop it. And it's still in the food supply. It's not gonna be taken out of the food supply until next year. Like th that's the, you know, the grace period. The companies have time to get it out of the food supply. Um, it's so by August 2nd of 2025, it's supposed to be gone, but this is, this BBO is a perfect example of our blind trust in the food supply. Friends want to dive deeper into our thought provoking conversations, become part of the beyond labels family today by joining below for any gift amount, you'll get access to the full uncut episodes. Every contribution, whether big or small, keeps this podcast going. So join us and expand your beyond labels experience. Thank you.